Okay, so welcome, welcome to the um, Paradox of Eternal Life uh, meeting. So there's some more Paradox that we're going to take uh, a look at today. And it's the Paradox with a very specific title like the Paradox of Awakening. I love this. So the paradox of awakening is, is like, okay, so you're on the path of awakening, but um, who's actually really learning anything or who is actually undergoing this process? What is real about this one that undergoes the process? And is there a paradox to discover somewhere? Oh, yes, there is. There's a big paradox, like an amazing paradox. So I've, I found it really interesting to, to read and prepare this uh, today because it was um, it is a discovery to hear this uh, anew, so to speak, to, um, to discover that the thing that you're actually practicing or the method you are using or the, the books that you're reading, anything that you do for it is in fact um, say in regards to a thing in regards to a thing that actually is the denial of what it wants to learn well that's a great paradox so that's we're going to deep that out a little bit today so I'm happy that you came here that you decided to join so it's with the paradox class it's it's a matter of be completely present because otherwise you miss it you miss it completely what we're actually talking about or what we're actually sharing so your presence here is really like yeah it's really necessary it's great it's great then then you will have the most of the fun in fact and also there's a lot of beauty and possibilities for deep insight and deep experience yeah so that's that's the offering today and um yeah i i found this book again it was like it's a book of um Thielhard. it's the hymn of the universe and i actually want to uh, read something out of it as a start for this moment together it is called a prayer so you can call it a contemplative prayer if you want uh, but it's rather um, intense like Pierre Thielhardt de Chardin was uh, very clear in his expression, so that's why I love to use him too. But this is a prayer. Lord Jesus, now that beneath those world forces you have become truly and physically everything for me, everything about me, everything within me, I shall gather into a single prayer both my delight in what I have and my thirst for what I lack. And following the lead of your great servant, I shall repeat those inflamed words in which I firmly believe the Christianity of tomorrow will find its increasingly clear portrayal. Okay, so what is that? What is that that he wants to recite here? Enflamed, enflamed words. So we're going to, to let that in too. So here is that. Lord, Lord, lock me up in the deepest depths of your heart. And then, holding me there, burn me. Purify me, set me on fire, sublimate me, till I become utterly what you would have me be. Through the utter annihilation of my ego. So I'll do this one more time. Lord, lock me up in the deepest depths of your heart and then holding me there, burn me, purify me, set me on fire, sublimate me, 
till I become utterly what you would have me be, through the utter annihilation of my ego. So I'll repeat that later on one more time. I love this. It's so great. So here we go one more time. Lord, lock me up in the deepest depths of your heart and then, holding me there, burn me, purify me, set me on fire, sublimate me, till I become utterly what you would have me be, through the utter annihilation of my ego. So that, that was from this book, then, the hymn of the universe. So there's some prayers in there. So this is, this is great. So how can this work then? It says, like, what is the thing that wants to be, to burn its ego? And we're not going to make a philosophy here or a discussion or anything. It's like that's not what this is about. But it's interesting to take a look at the paradox of it. Like the thing that wants the ego to be burned, what is that? Like what is that? Like that is the pure conscious of uh, your personality or something? Or what is it? So you see that it, it is... It's like it's not clear in that sense, it's not clear in what is what. Like you ask this of your Christ mind, there's something that wants to burn the ego, that wants to get rid of it, let it burn up, let it sublimate, let it do all things, like with so much passion and so much convincing, um, say, so much con conviction. So that, um, that would, that would, in that sense, um, never work without an, an like a bridge or a comforter in between. Like it would be impossible if 
if you were crying out, so to speak, crying out to the heavens for your salvation, for wanting God to pick you up from planet Earth or something, like first making this here real and then wanting God to pick you up. See, this could never have worked without a catalyst or a comforter or an, um, yeah, you could say a bridge between uh, between what and what. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But it's like that could never work without it. So it, that's why it's there. So in other words, if you if you um, have this desire, like I want only God, I want only so like the complete sublimation of anything else, the complete, um, say, set the whole rest on fire, and um, letting that all burn, so to speak. I can only do that in the presence of spirit. I'm giving that to spirit as the bridge between this and that. See, this, this is this is one of the ways that it came to us. Like Joel is sharing it too, and and it's in the New Testament. It's in the Course in Miracles. It's like there's a bridge, there's a comforter is being sent to us after Jesus resurrected. A comforter is sent here, and and that is like the interpreter. You could say <clears throat> it recognizes your heart's desire, and uh, say connects it with where it really belongs and what really needs to be healed and what really needs to occur. So all this is uh, uh, in that recognition, it can work. So, but the paradox still is then to look at what are we trying to do here? Like that would never work in itself. If you look at it as, as an attempt to get out of your ego into a God experience, like you could wait for a long time. So now this, uh, this is our final paradox class, or paradox meeting, and uh, we have been looking at some of the uh, pretty extreme ways that the paradox is present in our, um, uh, yeah, in our awakening. But now it's just purely to looking at, say, the the mechanisms that we use to wake up. The, the lessons that we do or the method that we use, the, the meditations that we use and all this. Like, and the reason that I do it this way is that there's really something to discover. And the part uh, that's going to be uh, interesting to you probably is this, is that you're not even, uh, say, you don't even remember or you don't even see how much you use uh, of the separation of your daily life, of your uh, ideas about yourself, or your personality, how much of that you use against the total surrender to God, so to speak. Uh, you, you use everything you can to, to deny it, in fact. So that's, this will become more obvious too. So I'm See, now at the same time, and this is where we come back to later on too, is like at the same time you see that when I'm saying this, I'm actually confirming that. I'm actually confirming that such a mechanism exists and making that real. And that real at the same time too. So that is, it's unbelievable, but that's how that goes. All right, so I'm going to share something with you that I put together and see it from there and see what happens. Paradox of awakening. So here are some points we're looking at today. The crucial statement that will be given, outcome, the idea of outcome, like doing things for a certain outcome, for a better experience, for a clearer mind, for illumination. Um, <coughs> perceptual devices we use. And then we talk about total dependence. And then we come back to the idea of choice one more time and some more, but I'm not going to tell you what, of course. So the mechanisms that we employ, here it says, the mechanisms that we employ in the awakening are only there because you think you can be separate from God, from eternal life. The thing that thinks that is impossible and does not exist. 
Now, what are we going to do? So the mechanisms that we employ in the awakening are only because you think you can be separate. See, and this is this is like a huge, you could say, like a huge problem in our awakening. So first, you see that first you see that there's separation. You you get stuck in it. You feel experiences of you have experiences that you don't know how to get out of it. Nothing seems to work. Relationships break. Your heart is broken. Your finances are drying up. Your um, you don't even have a house any longer, or who knows what your story is. It's like all this happens in say the um, yeah previous to your awakening experiences. So there's there's a real devastation connected to it. There's a real devastation. It's hard. It is you discover that it's really weird what you're actually doing, trying to survive. And why wouldn't there be a place for you in this humongous universe? Why wouldn't there be a place for you? That that's ridiculous. And that doesn't make sense at all. And why would people not be friendly to you? And and so you have your why questions all over the place so many of them you don't know what to do with yourself and you also don't know what to do with your thoughts so that's that's also an important discovery in the say in the walk to the start of your awakening you're you're getting sick of your thoughts you got enough of it you don't know how to get out of it because it seems to be the only thing there is but you also don't know how to deal with it you have no idea so here comes your awakening experience, then you suddenly pick up a book and it tells you that there's a way out of this, that, that there's a whole different thing going on, that there's a uh, divine spark in you that you can never lose, for instance. Like all of this starts to dawn in your consciousness. And at the same time, um, you still keep practicing your denial, in fact, and that yeah, can take a moment. So these these things combined makes it really like a roller coaster ride for most of us to to start the awakening, to start to come into a whole different way of thinking, and eventually giving yourself totally to the path and say commit yourself to uh, what you read and what you hear and what you start to experience you commit yourself to it so you slowly but certainly it takes over the way that you think the way that you live and the way that you um, say yeah in fact discover your newness so this is nothing new you know this you're in the middle of it so you know all this but i'm telling it for a very specific reason and so the great thing of uh, hearing this this way is then um, see the um, the thing, so to speak. See the yeah the the thing that uh, that wants this that knows one thing for sure that it doesn't want to live as a human being like it did before. It doesn't want to do that any longer. It doesn't know how to do anything else yet, but it's it's discovering it's. It's testing it. It's dis yeah, reading about it, um, entering, uh, like allowing ideas to come into your consciousness, and start to, to live with them, to be quiet, to maybe even say, come in touch with the teacher or with the master or with an who knows what. At least you you do everything you can to to look for a comfort in a whole different place. And in the meantime, say in, in the meantime, you're still this, in fact, this denial. In fact, you're still, um, uh, say, living with the possibility that you are you. You know, that you are you, that you live in this world, that you're so and so old, and that you're uh, located over there. Like, that is still normal to you. And and on and on and on. It's like there's there's lots of aspects, and more and more you discover how much you're actually tied into this world, into this way of thinking, 
and that it's not so easy to get out of it that you would have no idea how to do it actually you know so so these things um make it in fact impossible for you to wake up you could say it's like a, it is an impossibility to wake up it would be impossible for you to do that and so another way that that's being said is like you cannot think yourself out of your own dream that that is impossible too so once once you make one of the aspects real it is reality to you and the reality the true you as you are is out of the door you literally can't experience it if you're still holding on to your own idea about what is true so <clears throat> the path the lessons that we do the beautiful bible that we read that are inspiring us so something happens when we listen to it and and also like something is growing from within and this this also you know but something is growing from within and um, feeling more solid every time you have deeper experience of it so you could say like the the method that we use is not going to do it and the method that we use is still um, used by one who is actually the denial of of what it wants to learn so here's our paradox so that is the first situation that is uh, sketched, so to speak. Uh, on so I'm talking you into something here. So what are we doing now? The thing that thinks that is impossible and does not exist. It's impossible. So now you have... <coughs> you've read some, some literature, some spiritual literature you read some Bible, you have some experiences. And now actually you feel like, I want more of it. I just want more of it. So in your awakening, you want to achieve a certain outcome. Now that, there's nothing wrong with doing that, except that it's uh, in a realized mind, in your realized mind, in your Christ mind, achievement is an or an outcome is an like unknown thing it doesn't it doesn't exist like so this is this is a huge shift that you're making in your awakening you you come to the point where you actually see that things don't necessarily have an outcome but something else is happening and i'm stopping right here so something else is happening and what is that something else is that you um you actually um say come closer all the time that all the time that you um realize it that something inside of you is very quiet is very still is very is always there so it seems like a constant factor that you are say discovering inside yourself so that it doesn't move it is always there you cannot always get to it in your consciousness but at least it is there and you, more and more you get that confirmed inside yourself so this um, this constant factor this what is always there like you could say like the realized you is inside of you it's not anywhere else so slowly but certainly it emerges out of your subconscious of, or your supraconscious. Like it suddenly appears into your consciousness as a constant factor, which is not an outcome. It's not an achievement. It is not done by your doing. It is not, um, it is not uh, an achievement like no you can't take credit for it it's literally by your openness suddenly it appears like you have no um, conscious control over it it just comes to you like by an act of grace you could say that's a beautiful way to say that um, but um, what i'm actually meaning to say is then so the methods that we use the but also the thinking that we do in our awakening is is basically always still uh, based on an idea of achievement of an outcome of an uh, say an 
maybe even competition or who knows what it's like it's that is so human to think like that you take that with you in your awakening too not that you have to keep doing that absolutely not but it happens and that's exactly that you could well say like that's exactly in the way for the achievement itself for the manifestation or the realization of you see i have to be careful what words to use now so it's, it, it, this is what i mean why it's so interesting to look at the paradoxes because it actually fine tunes the way that you look at yourself fine tunes your position in the whole story and um say um, when i say there's no outcome there's an there's a realization there's suddenly that coming into your full awareness the light and love that you are is coming into your awareness <clears throat> so i i related that to the methods that we use is the denial of it the methods that we use will not bring you there but with using those something happens you start to learn to move backwards and allow the light to come up uh, you um, have no opinions about anything you have no expectations you have no um, say yeah, sense of achievement or you leave all those competitive attributes for what they are for just a moment you come with open hands like just open hands to your to your father you come with open hands and then who knows it might come to you it might just be realized in you suddenly there's a revelation or an yeah something that is really given to you to confirm that what is already there in you see and here here's another paradox that what you're looking for is already there what you're looking for what you so desperately want is manifest in you all the time i cannot hear the voice for god i don't know i'm i'm really trying i'm really trying to listen to the voice of god god's healing voice like i really want that and it's like well that is already occurring in you so maybe you should stop trying maybe you should stop having any idea about it what it looks like how it feels or what it how it speaks to you keep a completely open mind to let that occur and see what happens it's like let it all become an act of grace or an, an opening up in a whole different way than you're not used to it's like forget all your own ideas about it and here we go again it's like suddenly there's just moving into your consciousness a subtle but very uh, constant experience of you just feel secure you just feel safe you just feel um, like moved you feel so good about uh, even the breath that you breathe you feel so good about the fact that you with no other idea can sit in your chair completely fulfilled you know like this what did you do for that nothing did you need to do an a method or use a method for it to get there no in fact not can it happen instantaneously yes does it need preparation who knows see all these things are uh, if you think for yourself that you need a method in order to do this or that you need to do this five years before you have your first experiences or like what I discovered with many on the infinite way path it's like they're waiting for the click and the click as Joel describes it for instance you will never experience it it was Joel's experience so however that click idea is in you you have no idea but certainly not what you think happened to Joel you know what I'm saying is like the power of your mind is so incredible so you use it continuously in fact against yourself and without noticing it's like if you think it takes five years for you to to come to an experience it will be that for you so that's also so amazing if I think I need a method 
in order to experience my direct communication for God. Well, there you have it. Then I need a method. If I say like, okay, so now I'm going to sit and and take a cup of tea. By taking a sip of that cup of tea, I enter into the doors. Like I enter into heaven by just doing that. If that is what I think, it, it will be so for me. It's like that's how you... Um, how you influence, like you influence your your own awakening path. You influence it by your ideas about the path. That's why I love to say use this paradox idea to set that free. In fact, so like not not having these ideas or holding on to these ideas, but letting them go. Really helpful. Really helpful. I I have to <laughs> get it out. <laughs> I have to get it out. See, to your whole mind, which is the realized mind in you, that is you, uh, say, maybe not conscious right now, um, but emerging any time now, your whole mind, your creative mind, any outcome is totally meaningless. It doesn't wait for it. It's like it doesn't need to wait for anything. It's realizing itself. See, the whole mind can only be an extension of itself. It, it doesn't do anything else. It is just itself, expressing itself, extending itself. Then I put down the question, like, how can this nevertheless be successful? Like, how can this all work out then if, if this is so subtle so to speak it if it is so um depending on how we look at it how this is happening it's like am i not allowed to have any outcome anymore it's like no that's not what i'm saying either so it, it is still different but it's good to know this to your whole mind any outcome is totally meaningless so that that is also another way of saying is like if you you could say like if you if you give up your hope to awaken you probably awaken you know it's like if you have so much hope that it will happen soon or that you you do everything you can for it but also like you you want a certain outcome if i give that up uh, I might just jump in heaven, so I like might I might just wake up right where you start. So that's why I say to many of us is like I say this is, um, if you can just exactly accept the way that you are now, the way that you feel about yourself, the way that you sit there in your chair, so to speak, or who knows what you're doing, like if you could completely accept that now you would sink into a deeper layer of your consciousness like it's inevitable because it has everything to do with acceptance with with allowing it to be perfect why not allowing it to be perfect N has nothing to do with form has nothing to do with my ideas it has nothing to do with what i see or what i understand like all of this and we don't need in order to to see it really to let that what is be and that is that is amazing that's amazing so that's really like the message in that sense behind all of this whole mind can only be an extension of itself so it doesn't need to be concerned with what it is that's something that a human being does but not whole mind or creative mind or your christ mind Your separate existent, uh, your separate existent identity, has denied the awakening call from your holy eternal self. Your separate existent identity has denied the awakening call from your holy eternal self. And it's like, what is that? What kind of statement is that? I'm busy on my spiritual path to wake up out of this dream. I've heard a call and I've answered. And then it's like, well, yeah, sure. So your separate uh, existent identity has denied the awakening call. It is actually still doing it. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like it's still doing it. It's still using everything it can not to wake up. And certainly you have your moments in which something feels very peaceful, or that you have a different experience of yourself, sure. But then you fall back into like the denial, in fact, of your eternal self. See, I don't want to make this true either. So I'm going to read a little bit further. Truth is true and nothing else is true. Like that's the only thing that's yeah, you have nothing to say about it, you say. It's like, truth is true, nothing else is true. All your perceptual devices are a denial, or denial, I get, denial, of the whole reality of single truth. All your perceptual devices are denial of the whole reality of single truth. So perceptual devices, what on earth is that? So I'm going to ask you to write it down. Jesus represents you with the covenant, covenant of eternal life. Okay, so all your perceptual devices are a denial of your whole reality of single truth. Ah, well, we're going to get you into that. So what does that mean? Perceptual, since you all know so well how this works. Here's the whiteboard. So what is it? What are the perceptual devices that you apply to deny the love of God? So here we go, and, and this is like the we're really going to the basis of all this. It's like your reality is a total dependence on God. It's like there's no doubt about that. There's no ch yeah. There's no choice to be made. So your reality is a total dependence on God. If your eternal creative reality is a dependence on God, and you know it, why do you then continue to depend on your own devices? And this is a very honest question, in fact. And like, if your eternal creative rea uh, reality is a dependence on God, why do you then continue to depend on your own devices? And here it says immediately too, this question does not validate the mechanisms of the mind. It's like whatever we're discussing here, you can put everything on a whiteboard. You can you can come up with all the ways that you're denying the love of God, like as a big list, ever growing big list. But it does not validate the use of it. It does not validate the mechanisms of mind to deny the love of God. So this is just like a disclaimer, so to speak, in the whole story. It's a disclaimer. This question does not validate it. So, like, there are no rights that you can draw off of this. No, your reality is a total dependence on God. So, take a look at what devices you use to to deny it, and and say, go on an unexplored path to discover what it is to be without that. See, the devices you apply, you use as means to not will with God. And that in itself is an impossible idea. So that's where we return back into the paradox, like big time. The devices you apply, you use as a means to not will with God, while there is nothing else but the will of God. That's why this is an impossible idea. Even the denial is a total possible, impossible idea. Okay, so the method by which you are taught appears to offer you choice only because you believe choice is possible. Right? So it's like 
by the idea that you have a choice, you have a choice. You believe that you have a choice, so then you have a choice. So now even that is used in your awakening mm, manner too, in your awakening um, method. It is included in that too. Because here it says, like, your only choice is simply to deny the denial. Deny the denial. So what will happen if you do that? This world, with no justification for separation, will disappear forever. Because no part of it was ever real. Until you come to that, no progress cr uh, can be made. And, and these are like, wow, that's a, quite an expression, but it is not any different. It is just simply that. So this world with no justification for separation, can you justify the separation? No, you can't. So when you discover that you cannot do that, when you discover that you cannot deny the love of God, what happens? Like if you completely admit that to yourself, that you cannot deny it, that there's no use of doing that, there's no justification for it, like there's literally no need to do that any longer. Because you, you see that your freedom, your love, your fulfillment, your being is in the total dependence on God, not anything else. So what happens when you see that there's no justification for the denial? You literally like see the world disappear because the world was made to to deny to deny the love of God. Otherwise, it would have no function. It would have no role. It would have no. There's no justification for you to be here. That's why we say like the world is over. Was over a long time ago. Like it's gone. You just relive uh, a memory and that you still try to echo through time, like echo into time, project it into time in order for it to be there. Otherwise it would completely say stop to to be, say, um, <coughs> to be there for you. <laughs> so this is an interesting idea. So all all the things that you feel regarding that, all the things that you feel with an idea of a dissolving earth, like if you would really take a look at it, it would disappear in front of your eyes. It would disappear to exist. It would cease to exist. And all the feelings that you have in which you say like, yeah, but, 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 and on and on and on, all that that comes up then is is what the denial is, is literally what creates time in your mind, is literally you're making it on the spot. And and you can't believe that until you see it, and you, until you see it disappear, and seeing that there's nothing lost uh, in that. Like it, it was over a long time ago, it's very old, so to speak, it's a very old idea. And why would you want to perpetuate an idea that is over? Why would you want to perpetuate an idea that confirms to you the non-perfection of you as in a human identity? Like, really, why would you want to do that? I know deep in your heart you don't want to do that. It's like, see, there, there is the paradox again. I know you don't want to do it, but why are you doing it? And who is doing that? I love this. I think there's so much, like it's really on the edge where it really happens, you could say, like on the edge where where really uh, great shifts can occur. By you feeling this, like you want to you wanna feel what this says. You want to be there right on the spot to to see this world disappear. You know, to see that there's no justification for this place whatsoever. We do our best to keep it here. In, it's like fully on using it. Using it to deny the love of God. When the love of God is denied in our experiences, when we see the hurt, the pain, 
the accident, the who knows what that you come up with. You don't want it. Immediately you don't want it. You, you experience it as a threat. You experience it as, as a chronic disease. You experience it as death. It's the title. Begin, here it says, like begin to positively assert using the power of your mind that the realization of all happiness and love originates through your total dependence on your Creator. So, and this is like everything is pointing in that direction. Everything. If everything is pointing in that direction, guess what happens? When you direct every occurrence to that, then the total dependence on your Creator, on God, what happens? All of the love and happiness originates through your total dependence on your Creator. Then we said, <coughs> we said it in the other sheet too. It's like there's, it is in fact the only thing that's real about you, the only thing that is really occurring, but in a way that you cannot think of. It becomes like an inner total experience of yourself. So here, you suffer from an authority problem that is literally killing you. You did not make yourself. So that is a nice sentence. You did not make yourself. So you can think you made yourself because of what you did and thinking that you need to in fact um, have um, yeah you can take credit for it you did it you know you you did it you you thought you made yourself you did it you became what you wanted to be and not that that was very satisfactory but you you did make in your dream you did think that you made yourself like I said, you weren't happy with what finally was the outcome of it. It wasn't really it at all. So you got so sick and tired of it. So and and literally also, like what it said here just before, it's like it literally kills you. Your own idea about yourself is literally killing you. And literally, in a literal sense, you live with an idea of death, uh, which might even feel as a step into freedom if you finally get rid of all this stuff that you've been carrying and dragging with you in your idea about yourself, in your human existence. But it's like you suffer from an authority problem. You're, we saw this the other day too. It's like the author of you is, <coughs> is writing his story on you. And um, that is the real occurrence. That is the real occurrence. So you don't need to write your own story. Even though we say like this is all based on creative self-expression of mm, the one that you are. Uh, but the one that you are is in total alignment with the will of God. Is like whole and perfect and completely in communication with its source. See, the source is expressing itself through you. Anyway, so you suffer from an authority problem that is literally killing you. You did not make yourself. Here is a totally unbelievable solution to an unreal problem. Like literally, you're killing yourself and didn't do anything either. And uh, there's an unbelievable solution to your unreal problem so and that's called revelation you know that's called revelation you the unbelievable solution to your existence is revelation is is having an experience of direct communication with god seeing that that is your source like you experience that once and you never have a question about it again like 
No, that is my reality. So here you are, the high metamorphosis of your cellular reassociation with the light and love that is all around you. So here you are in the high metamorphosis of your cellular reassociation with the light and love that is all around you. So you could say like <clears throat> in the so we come back to in fact we come back to your deep experience of yourself. It's like you um, follow this method. You did it and you want to achieve something. You, like we said in the beginning, it's like you want to achieve something, you want a certain outcome, but then something else happens. Despite of all of your actions, something else is happening. You, you literally come into a revelation, uh, which is like an intense um, experience of your communication with God. It, it turns everything upside down for you like this is this is literally the only way that your problem is going to be solved by letting that occur and it's not under your conscious control and it's like up to this point is what we read in the other sheets like up to this point if if that doesn't occur then that didn't happen much so it's like you you continuously on this path are reevaluating yourself and thinking ideas about your uh, awakening, thinking that it should be like this, or maybe I should have already been there, or you know, you, you're in competition using all your ego devices, all your perceptual devices, in order to describe yourself as what you're not, and you're keeping yourself busy with that. Like you literally can't stop yourself doing the same thing even in your spiritual path like you're still doing the same thing as you would do as a human being so here comes then out of the blue an experience that is not of this world and and that totally hits you so to speak voila it's like that's that's the only way out it's like there's no other way out it is it is an unbelievable solution to an unreal problem but the confirmation of it makes you feel like home the confirmation of it is uh, of the actual happening of it uh, will take away uncertainty will solve every question that you could possibly have about your path or about your um, process in all this like it doesn't work that way at all it's a whole new way literally of thinking an unexplored path where you where you come into a realization and say the the continuity of that or the constancy of that certainty that's really what that is so that's the only thing in fact that you return back to just by staying in a constant release of any kind of the idea that you could hold any kind of idea that would be in the way letting it go letting it go not trying to make a better idea or trying to solve that or trying to do anything with it so you could say like you continuously uh, hand everything over and uh, i'm waiting for any signal like a total dependence on god is a total dependence on god there's no 50 50 in it there's no um, exclusion in it there's no uh, exceptions in it there's no none of that so you could say like everything that you do think and celebrate and um, breathe and all this is all as your uh, total dependence on god giving it back to god thanking God, thinking, um, like p uh, focusing on God, opening for God, like this is going to be your daily activity. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there's not so much to say about that in that sense. So it's like, it's your happy, it's your happy therapy, if you want. It's like, just from now on dedicate everything to god bring it back to god like i don't know what to do with them giving it to god i'm uh, i'm so happy i don't know why but i give it to god because 
like my dependence is total on God. Like there's nothing else. Uh, in that sense, there's nothing else to relate to or to. There's nothing to deny. This is my true nature, and it's it's everything. So and as it said in the last sentences, it's like a total reassociation of your cellular, um, even your cellular system, to the light and love of God. So even your physicality, it's like give everything to God, and dedicate everything to God, spend time with God, um, refer everything back to God, like it it won't leave any space for uh, deviation, for denial, for um, alternative ideas, for parallel, for agendas, for you name it. Like it, it does not have any space for that. So that's why you start to extend from within, because there's literally nothing else you have time to do, in fact. It's like you, there's nothing else you want to do. So that is the answer, like that's the answer, <laughs> that is the um, making the circle, say closing the circle or making it full circle. All of this is in fact all turning back all the time to your total dependence on God, <clears throat> to your love for God, like that is how simple that is, the love for God, your love for God. Disappear into it, uh, sit still with it breathe it, uh, celebrate it, dance with it, sing with it, laugh with it, cry with it, all this, all this, you know, it's like your, your daily practice. Not that it's a method, no, it's a celebration. It is allowing that, what is already present in you, to emerge in, fully in your consciousness. All right. So thank you so much for uh, say participating in this um, paradox meeting, paradox classes. I'm very happy that this took place, and um, it's a great discovery to do this. And thank you for your patience, and thank you for your openness. I thank God. Thank you, God. Thank you.